Hi, and welcome to the A Quilting Life podcast. I'm Chelsea from Chelsea Stratton Designs. And I'm Sherry McConnell from A Quilting Life. And today is April 8th. And also April is one of my favorite months. Yeah, (laughs) April is a significant month in our family. We do have a couple of birthdays including yours, <laughs> that, that come up this Isn't month. Isn't it obvious? <laughs> yes. So good month. Weather's still good. Weather, Weather's still spring-like. We haven't hit those high temperatures yet. I'll start before we get into everything that we have to share today. I will just mention our sponsor, Cozy Earth. And we love Cozy Earth. I'm especially excited this time of year about the sheets as it starts heating up. They are so temperature regulating and I always feel like I get a cooler night's rest with my cozy earth sheets. And I was on the website the other day too, browsing and noticed that they have a brand new line of pajamas that they've just released. So be sure to check that out and different styles, different prints and different patterns. And I also know Billy's been looking at cozy earth lately right yeah well as was mentioned (laughs) on the podcast now for a couple episodes i'm getting married here very soon in about a month or a little less than a month when this comes out and uh my mom and dad actually their gift to us was a new bed so i'm gonna be putting some cozy earth sheets on that new bed once we get it into the place so that is the best gift (laughs) yeah it was totally underrated it was so funny though because i was at the shower the other day and i mentioned that and you would be amazed almost everybody there was like oh that's what my parent got for us for our wedding or that's what my husband's parents got for us for our wedding like it was like a universal parent gift is a new mattress a new mattress and didn't you say that you're (laughs) my dad my dad's grandma gave you yes our mattress, mattress when yeah. you got oh, married wow. yeah so yeah so i'm, I'm so i mean i I'm hear about do cozy that earth for so my much kids. I, yeah. I, I don't know why i haven't already but now i will definitely be purchasing cozy some cozy earth, earth. Yeah. <laughs> Yay! yes <laughs> and don't forget you can use the code a quilting life on the cozy earth website at checkout for 35 percent off your purchase Okay, so we have something exciting on the wall that mom is going to talk about. So this is the quilt that is on the cover of our upcoming book with Fat Quarter Shop. Our book is called Family Favorites with Sherry and Chelsea, and it contains blocks in a variety of sizes with sampler options and some other fun fun smaller projects i'm actually going to be making some pillows soon so (laughs) we are so excited about this and this quilt was actually pieced by nancy lane and it it uses our laguna sunrise fabrics and I, i was so grateful to nancy for being able to do this i you know was busy sewing a lot of the laguna sunrise quilts and she actually did this one and a, another of the Laguna Sunrise quilts and some blocks for me. And it just kind of made my month go much better. So gorgeous, gorgeous quilt. And the quilting on this is custom quilting by Val Krieger. And anyway, we want to let you know that you can pre-order now. And that would be super helpful if you're thinking yeah. about getting the book to do the pre-orders it really helps them with we have a sew along printing we will have a sew along yeah not with this quilt with another sampler it's my quilt that chelsea designed yeah. yes will be the sew along and there will be kits available for that and all of that but right now it, you can pre-order yeah from fat quarter shop and we'll have a link in the description we're really excited about it i know i'm really excited anything that we get to collaborate on as far as books. I was really nervous the first time that we did it with the Christmas book and it was such a good experience and it's the same now. We're having a lot of fun, a lot of our favorite blocks that we came up with and we can't wait to share more of the quilts. Right, They're super cute and yeah, we hope that you'll pre-order and sew along with us. Yeah, and we we will have some scrappy projects in there too. We're both doing scrap quilts right now, Mm -hmm. so really excited about this so do the quilts are they using all types of fabric or you just using laguna sunrise well yeah 
we each have a quilt with just Laguna Sunrise, and then we both have a scrappy quilt. So it could be a variety. Of it could be a variety, and the the directions are really good. They're written for fat quarters, so you could even pull from your stash, yeah. or you could buy a kit. They will have some kits, lots of different options. Yeah. And then on the table, and this I just kind of picked because I wanted to really show. This is a strawberry, one of my strawberry lemonade quilts, and this is Getaway. I wanted to show kind of how they were the collections work together. Somebody messaged me recently, and she said it so well. She said, "Strawberry lemonade and Laguna Sunrise look really beautiful together, but they each have their own personality." And I thought that was a great way Ooh, to I like that to say that. So yeah, yeah you can mix and match a, a lot of these fabrics and. Wanted, wanted to just share that. Yeah. Custom quilting from this one on Val also. And Ooh. if you're waiting to see Chelsea's Laguna Sunrise quilt next podcast, I yeah. think probably the next two podcasts will be all Chelsea quilts. Yeah. I'm really excited <laughs> about them. And I think they're so cute. So yes. thanks, Mom. Yes. I uh, did not put this on the outline, but something else that's new or that you want to talk about, would you want to talk about your trip to Temecula? I actually did want to mention that. Yeah, Sorry, I I was going to put that on and I forgot. Yeah, I'm really grateful for the, the quilt guild in Temecula is called the Valley of the Mist Quilt Guild. Ooh. And I think that's such a beautiful description because it's such a beautiful area. I've I've driven straight through Temecula before off of I-15 on the way to San Diego, but I'd never really gotten off before. And it is just such a beautiful, beautiful place. And the guild was so warm and welcoming. I did a presentation and trunk show one evening. And then the next day I taught a class and I actually taught my happy-go-lucky quilt with our Simply Delightful Fabrics. I taught that pattern but it was really cool because the the location for their workshops is at this clubhouse at, out in wine country. And so I got to drive, uh, I don't know, it was probably 10 miles maybe through wine country and all these beautiful vineyards and these oh my goodness. beautiful, you know, wineries and gorgeous homes too. And so then when you're teaching in this clubhouse, you're looking out the mountain. I'll actually have Billy put a picture up from, this was a picture taken right outside where the class was. So this was the view that you were looking at while you were sewing. So really, really want to thank them for their hospitality and in having me. There needs to be a book title, The Valley of the Mist. <laughs> the Valley of the Mist. And a creative. Yeah. Just, oh my goodness. Just a gorgeous part of California. And we actually got lucky. It was a midweek trip and the traffic was good. If you can get from Las Vegas to Southern California in four hours, hours, you're doing really well. (laughs) Yeah. So So we, I have to go a little bit off topic speaking of this traffic because my mom took all of the girls, both of my soon to be sister-in-laws and we went up to Salt Lake City for a trip and I actually drove with my brother (laughs) up there and he kept commenting how busy it was because there were basketball games in Las Vegas. But then he kept commenting, it's better than driving to California. It's better than, he's like, man, if the traffic was even like this going to California. And I'm like, you don't even live in California anymore. But he kept commenting on that traffic. Oh yeah. I would drive north to Utah any day over over south to california but it's like you want to be in california <laughs> you so you have to... no other choice unless you want to fly right yeah but we're so close you might as well just drive yeah supposedly they're starting to work on the high speed train very soon but i don't know there's gonna be a high speed train in yeah, between. i mean they've been saying that for 20 years but oh, okay. i think i think this one might actually this, come through yeah yeah wow <laughs> i just want to like have some crumpets and stuff on a train, like the (laughs) old school stuff. I should probably mention the quilts really quickly behind Chelsea. Yeah, because you switched them up, right? I did switch them up. After I got back from Temecula, I put all my quilts in cloth. You you notice, right? Mm -hmm. I used to have stacks all over the place that I hadn't put away since Christmas, but all my quilts are in the closet now, and I left out. Try to give my home a more summery feel. But behind Chelsea is 
Patchwork Garden Remix on the top in Laguna Sunrise and then Shine Remix on the bottom in Laguna Sunrise and then behind me is <laughs> our Happy Go Lucky 2 on the top, Tulip and Vine in the middle and on the bottom, on the bottom is Starry Eyed. And the quilts behind Billy haven't changed, yeah. but we'll put them in the description. Okay. Well, perfect. All right. So, yeah. So anyone that needs to know any of those quilts, we always will have them linked. I'm going to jump into our listener quilts today. And again, thank you to everyone that, that continues to send in the quilts into our email. I'm now into the March. Today I'm sharing, I'm through February's quilts. I'm into March. So you can sort of see where how... It might, you know, when you send them in, they might not be on there for, like I said, about a month or a month and a half. But again, thank you to everyone that has been sending them. Uh, this first one that I'm going to share is a the 2023 block of the month quilt, uh, quilt along, right, Mom? That was yeah. the one that I, okay, I showed. I showed them all before, and this is from Ruth. She says, "Hi, Sherry, Chelsea, and Billy. Wanted to share my quilt from your 2023 quilt along." I've only been quilting for two years, and this was my first quilt along, so I was nervous. If I could keep up and would I make the right color fabric choices, I did not go beyond my comfort zone by doing Sherry's gorgeous final setting. Maybe next time. I'm happy with the quilt, and it would be a perfect it would be perfect for a little girl. I already had a fat quarter bundle in my stash of Flower Garden by Echo Park, so I decided to use that. And she said, thanks for the experience, which gave me confidence for future quilt alongs. That was from Ruth. So Ruth, I think you did a great job yeah, of that. It's looks beautiful. really yes. looks great. You don't need to be nervous at all. Okay. So the next one here is not too long of an email here, but this is a pillow sent in by George. Um, it said that he uh, made this for a friend, used scraps and added a zipper to the back Thanks for the free pattern. And that's the little mini charm pillow right. that you gave away for free. With our strawberry lemonade yeah. collection. Yes. And so, yeah, it was a, yeah. a unique. Um, and that was beautiful also. Bill, yeah. Billy did show us all the pictures today before we started recording. George, I thought it was lovely. <laughs> yes. I like that pillow so much, though. Like, I like that pattern. I do, too. I keep wanting to make it in every collection. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> This one here is your, it was your hearts at home quilt, right, Chelsea? Yeah. Okay. This and it's super cute. I love it. So the picture is up right now. And she, uh, this is from Kathy. She says, I often use scraps from the front of the quilt to piece the back of the quilt. Remember, we were talking about backings yes. a while ago. Uh, she says, it does take a lot longer than using 108 inch fabric. But as you can see in the next picture here, that she, I mean, those are four separate blocks yeah. right that she just she did such a good job like on that. a little plus yeah plus uh design in the back so that's yeah and that's the first thing i said i'm like oh we just talked about piece backings and here's a piece backing quilt to share yeah all right and then the last one here it was okay yeah that's right it's from chelsea's regal pines quilt now this is also one that we talked about making mistakes on quilts in a previous episode uh, this is from Sally. She says, Dear Sherry, Chelsea, and Billy, after watching your latest podcast on YouTube, I remembered that in the process of making my version of Regal Pines, I realized I had sewn a background piece upside down one, once I started quilting. The background was a light gray grunge, and I left it as it is. Thank you for all your inspiration and encouragement. And that's again from Sally. So I saw it, and I was looking at these pictures, and I'm like, well... Everything looks fine to me. And then there's another picture where she sent a little closer shot. And I was like, I don't I don't understand where, where the mistake is. But Chelsea pointed it out right away. Maybe you could sort of describe it. Yeah, and it's not a mistake. Yeah, it looks it's good. what she's saying is that light grunge just really blends in so it doesn't the chain doesn't look like it it repeats it was, and so yeah. in the original pattern there was the chain that yeah. it connected all those. Everything blocks. connects. Uh -huh. Yeah. But I also just want to say, not a mistake. I, the quilt is beautiful. And so, yeah, what you think, I think all of us, and I, I do this, I'm like the worst at it. What you think is a mistake. Quilt it turns is, out yeah. into like a sort of a unique yeah, pattern it's unique. as its own. Yeah. Yeah. So I appreciated just that being sent in just because I thought it was beautiful. Well, And it, it's also interesting because, okay, yeah, she noticed it. I, I Who knows? It how soon she noticed it. I mean, maybe she was several blocks in of putting yeah. it together, right? And then it's like, 
hmm, do I want to take this apart? Or actually, it actually looks good as it is. Yeah. And then just continue on. And then, yeah, again, it's not really, I guess technically it's a mistake because you didn't follow the pattern exactly how it was, but then it also makes it its own unique thing. Yeah, yeah I so, agree. Yeah. Sort of sort of interesting. Okay, so yeah, those are the listener quilts today. We've got four of them shared today. So again, thank you. And we have a listener question episode coming up at the end of this month. And we actually, by the time this releases, we should, you might be able to squeeze in a couple more questions. So like yeah. if you send them in on today or tomorrow. So we'll be ready for those. We want the question. <laughs> All right, and last thing before we jump into today's topic, I want to mention that it's possible that we might have already hit our 100,000 subscriber mark. So I think that deserves an air horn. It's so close. <laughs> what yeah. number? So we're like, as, as of recording, we're within around 350, 400 more. Yes. So it could it it could hit. So we'll we'll have like a special video and thank you and all that and eventually I guess we'll get one of those plaques and everything. But if we, we already if we already have hit it, then thank you to everybody. Yeah. You know? But it should be sometime in April, if not by now. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I'm pretty okay. sure it's gonna happen Why? in okay. April. So thank you to everyone that has subscribed and shared the shared videos with other people and, and all that. Just wanted to say that do you yes, remember when we you. started this and we took a little picture and the lighting was yellow and we had maybe <laughs> one subscriber no we had more than that because we started we had four thousand yeah. subscribers when we started the podcast yeah. Mm-hmm. so yeah in that in that range yeah mm-hmm. so yeah exciting just wanted to mention that in case it hit i don't know why yeah. i think this is so cool i know it was funny because i showed somebody the other day it's very cool and it had gone up 100 from when I had last looked just mm-hmm. in a few days. And I was like, oh, that's good. Well, <laughs> so. And yeah, that's the other thing. I mean, uh, typically subscribers do go up when new videos release. So, right. you know, on days that there aren't videos, maybe it stays a little, a little oh. less. So it's possible it could happen today. Who yeah. knows? <laughs> but thank you either way. Will you yes. text me? Yeah. If I'll, like I'm not like I'll, we aren't I'll, I'll let you know as soon as I know. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> The plaque I, I was mentioning of- is we'll get like a little thing from Google or YouTube oh, with cool. its silver. So when your channel hits a hundred thousand subscribers, you get like a little silver. Are plaque. we gonna put it in here? Put it. I mean, I maybe we could put it right here or something. I don't know. Well, yeah, um, like right yeah. there, so it shows in the camera. <laughs> yeah, Man. a lot. Of, and so a lot of YouTubers, they when they get that, yeah. then they yeah they display it somewhere. Then a million subscribers is gold. So, which wow. I mean that. We're not looking take us a while. at that for <laughs> yeah. I was going to say maybe like five Missouri <laughs> Val- how, Missouri how Star. Missouri Star. I'm sure they have over a million I, episodes. I don't, last I checked, I'm not, I think they're close. Oh, okay. Yeah, so like that would be like maybe the one quilting channel that would yeah. be close to getting that. Okay. But but yeah, so, but hey, we're, we'll be happy to get a silver. Yeah. Like. <laughs> Guys, okay. it's episode 108, and yes. it's the eighth. Oh yes. wow! <laughs> I've spent a lot Chelsea of time with people. Chelsea was talking a lot about numbers yes. earlier and everything. She, so she's a numerologist. <laughs> yeah, I am. Okay. okay, okay. Sorry. Let's go. Okay, so today's topic is uh, I wanted you guys to talk about sharing quilting with other people, and I guess there's there's a few different ways we can go with it. First. You guys have both shared your stories, like what got you into quilting, who got you into quilting. My my mom, just to recap real quick, it was her grandmother that first introduced it to you. Chelsea essentially was introduced to it by my mom. So we, we sort of know that. But what I wanted you guys to first start off and talk about is that, okay, they introduced you to something, but what was it about quilting that made you continue it? So I know I've made these analogies before, but in golf, okay, my dad first introduced me to golf, but you know, there's a lot of dads who have introduced their sons to golf and guess what? They didn't do it because they didn't find enjoyment in it. So there was something along the line with me that I'm like, oh, I hit a good shot or I actually like this, you know, to I'm having fun doing this. So I'm going to continue it and pursue it. Right. So what was it about quilting for you guys that first what was it that made you be like, I like this and I want to keep doing it? I loved this question and I knew the answer right away because 
I remember when I first started quilting, I actually wanted to make Christmas gifts for my family that were economical. You know, we had a young family, couldn't afford to, you know, spend a lot of money on gifts for extended family, but it seemed like we always had extended family Christmas parties and I had a cousin and, you know, she worked full time and her husband worked full time and they just always got these great gifts for my kids. And I was just like, I have to take gifts for everybody, but I don't have it in my budget. So I made little quilted things. And so I feel like that's kind of what got me going because I could economically make small projects that I could quilt myself and and give as gifts. And I probably owe that to my grandmother too because she made placemats and stuff like that. So So it was essentially like, I'm able to create something and give it away and feel like I've, you know, it wasn't, like you said, it was economical for you. It was a way to give back to others in a way you could afford. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I remember doing little Christmas wall hangings for everybody one year. And so, yeah, I think that was it. I think what's cool for me about your experience with that is we would go to my great grandma's house for Christmas every year and have a meal and everyone would sit in a circle (laughs) and we would pass the gifts around and most of those gifts were handmade because my grandma's and my mom's aunt. And so I was very used to the idea of being given a handmade gift. And so I feel like from a very young age, I learned to appreciate it that these gifts were handmade. And that was normal for that side of the family was receiving a handmade gift. And I don't think that's normal everywhere. Right. And I learned to appreciate that. So I love it. I have really fond memories of it wasn't out of the norm for me to receive something that was handmade. Yeah. No. And my aunt, she wasn't a quilter, but she did embroidery and cross stitch and so she often gave cross stitch or embroidered framed pieces especially to my grandma her mom and and then she made me the coolest scarf one year though yeah oh she got into knitting knitting yes and she was super cool and it was purple guys (laughs) yeah fyi i still have all the scarves that she yeah i think i do too yeah well so then what was it when you started quilting, Chelsea, that kept you going. And I mentioned, you know, like, and you've talked about before, you probably, the first quilt you did was probably a little too much. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. So to me, it's like, if you were to do something that was hard and taxing, what, then that's even more surprising that maybe you stuck with it because maybe you overdid it on the first one. It is surprising. Yeah. (laughs) I have surprised myself. (laughs) No, because like I've said before, my mom really, really tried. She was going to pay for all these materials. And I just, I was not having it. I was not happy about quilting. But yeah, when I went to quilt market, I, my mom's like, hey, you're going to be really overwhelmed. I'm like, okay, whatever. I don't know what you're talking about. But you are. I know it's the creative side of it. It wasn't just quilting. It was, whoa, I could make something creative through quilting and I truly have this belief that you cannot I don't think you can design fabric without and ending up becoming a quilter like maybe I'm wrong I won't say it as an absolute right I've seen a few people not do it but most of them get drawn in yeah eventually right yeah but the thing that kept me and I know what you're talking about because I was frustrated about that quilt and I did, I definitely did too much. And for most people, I think like, yeah, you, you would be turned off from that. But I really, really wanted to get better. I don't know what it was, some type of drive. And then I had um, just had my son and I feel like it was just like, I was awake really random times. (laughs) Nice. throughout the night. And I sewed so many quilts in my first year. It, it's ridiculous how many I sewed. And I think what was good about it is whatever that drive was, I learned a lot and I made a lot of mistakes. And I don't know what it was. I just really wanted to prove to myself that I could do it. And I just kept doing it. But now I really love it. I cannot even tell you. When I'm in a slump, I will say this. 
it is very hard for me to like quilting when I'm in a slump. But then when I'm out of the slump, like recently, I just like turn on my audible and I'm just like, I want to go home right now so I can sew. I really do. <laughs> right. Yeah. But I don't know what it was. I so think it was maybe actually have, doing too hard of a quilt actually helped a little bit because you're like, oh, you think that's going to push me away? I'm actually going to come back and maybe. show you I can do it. Like yeah. if you have like sort of a competitive mindset of like, okay, I didn't do it perfect, but don't think I'm going to quit just because maybe yeah. if you did something too easy, maybe you would have got bored. I don't know. It, See, I possible. don't know. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like the anomaly because I feel like normally you would, like, if you did something too hard, you were like, man, I'm done with this. I don't want to yeah. do this anymore. I, I think maybe that just proves I'm stubborn, but mom's like, hey, I'm, you, well, I'm, yes, you are. I'm just thinking you learned by immersion. You know, really, you just I really like that. Why is everything you say so cool in that? I don't, I don't know. It's all around you and you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I genuinely love it. I and I really I am the person I am the person that was like, I do not like this. And I will ne mom knows. Yeah. I didn't want it. I used to make fun of her. I feel so bad. I, I used to <laughs> tease her all the time. Oh, man. I would just be like, okay, you keep staying in that aqua room of yours, <laughs> sewing your life away. Yes. I did not think that that was and and just even still today, my husband and I were talking the other night. We've we our anniversary from when we filmed this was yesterday. We've been married 14 years and we were like, we could not even imagine that this is what I would be doing. Yeah. He really said, he's like the biggest supporter and you would <laughs> never think it because, but he just thinks it's so cool. Yeah. He loves it. Yeah. Yeah. 14 years ago and you were like a, ph a pharmacy tech, right? <laughs> yeah. At that time, yes. right? And I mean. How do you remember that? I remember, yeah. I'm still certified. <laughs> oh, that's I do cool. my continuing education oh, you every two oh, years. Cool. Yeah, I, I actually, my license, uh, I need to renew it in October, but I have all my certs, but my Nevada law one. So I need to do that. Do that one again. I mean, yeah. yeah, because yeah, for, if you think about it, in 14 years, you're like, okay, he's I worked starting there a his long career, time. you're doing that. And yeah. then no idea that you'd sort of branch off into doing your own small yeah. business type thing. So. I really wanted yeah. to be a pharmacist. Mm -hmm. I did. I like started going to school for it. And what's really cool is the ladies at the pharmacy, they like, saw the, all the beginnings of it. So they were like, oh, what is going on? Right. But it's really funny because the store manager will still catch me in the store and ask me, do you want to come back to work? And I'm like, no, I don't want to come back to work. <laughs> I'm good. He knows what I do kind right. of, but... I, man, those were the days. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I'd much rather stay home sewing yes. if you want to know. But I could tell you every drug. generic <laughs> name, every whatever name of a drug and its side effects or whatever. Right. <laughs> so, Too much time in the pharmacy. Yes. <laughs> so now that you've, you've both shared your, I guess, what kept you quilting after your initial introduction to it. So we want to talk about what you guys can do now. Now you're into it you love quilting you do it maybe you could talk about now have you ever had have you ever tried to introduce someone new whether it was a, just a friend or a family member to quilting and first let's talk about someone who maybe shut it down or just didn't want to have you ever had an experience like that yeah i have okay. actually and uh... i a, a good friend of mine to this day uh, cindy She's a fantastic oh, yeah. seamstress. She actually has a degree in home economics and she can sew clothing like you wouldn't believe. And she, she made me a skirt one time. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. yeah. And I, she, I know who she is. I, I, I never knew that. So. Yeah. And she sews, you know, curtains and things for her home. And she actually went to my first quilt market with me and my very first market that I flew to Houston, she went with me and walked around. And I just thought for sure she was going to come home and be a quilter. Yeah. And she just, she didn't. She, her husband actually. He sews. He sews. He totally and sews. And he makes quilts. What? And yes, yeah, Robert does. He's a pilot too. Yeah. And he makes these denim. He got denim. Yeah. Oh. So, and this was the story after 9 11, he was, he's a pilot and he was out of work for a long time. And 
he started cutting up their genes that they had. They had been saving all their whole family's genes for <laughs> years. And we- t- I, I love Robert. I took him boxes of denim and he started making these gorgeous denim quilts and mapping it out and sewing it together. And I actually have one. I, I still need to get it quilted. He made you one? Uh, we have a denim quilt that Robert made. Wow. Yeah. I, I might have to pop up a picture of this. Yeah, yeah you should. Yeah. And, and he got really creative with them. And then he went back to work. So he quit yeah. sewing the denim quilts. And he is retired now. I keep And for a while, they were talking about getting a long arm so that he could quilt all of his denim quilts. But yeah. Wow. I, I just really thought Cindy would pick up quilting and she didn't. So so did was she still intrigued by quilt market and seeing the quilts? Oh. Like, does she like have an appreciation, I guess, for them? Definitely. She mm-hmm. loved it. And she was fascinating, fascinated by all the textiles mm-hmm. and the colors. And she loves fabric, as, but she just didn't take yeah. that extra step, she I guess. Like, ah, I don't yeah. feel she like. She has a lot of hobbies. Committing and, to it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Holy cow. I knew Cindy like 90% of my life and yeah. I didn't know that she was like, but I thought about it too. She was actually working full time then at that doctor's yeah, office. Remember? So maybe, maybe if she hadn't been working then maybe it would have been different. Yeah. So she's, she's not working in a full time job now. So I don't know. Okay. Well, that, yeah, that's, I, I know who she is. I didn't know. Yeah. And I, that's the first time hearing that story. Yeah. Maybe I probably knew that she did go to quilt market with you back then, but I've since forgot it because I was just like, I, I didn't think too much about what you were doing either at the time. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. what, what about you, Chelsea? Have you tried to introduce any friends to quilting? Or <laughs> Here's the deal. My story is a little different. <laughs> I have never successfully introduced someone to quilting, <laughs> but I just have had really cool experiences. And one example is, there's a woman and her daughter who I have seen all of her kids grow up. She s- started sewing and she really, really loved it. She started sewing in middle school and she thinks it's really cool what I do. And I, and I always like tell her when I talk to her, I'm like, don't give up quit. Like, I know you're in school and everything, but like, don't get, it's really cool to see youth sewing right? because that's like, oh my goodness you can start building that knowledge from when you're so young, but I'll just be certain places like at the bank. And so like quilting will get, Oh, and they'll be like, Oh, I, I made a quilt once. And I'm like, that's so cool. Like I want to validate their experience because it's cool. But one recently I have the best post office people. And I know you do too. (laughs) We go to, we have two post offices in town. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And anyways, uh, one day I had a lot of boxes and I didn't have any help. So I went to the back door to drop them all off and ask them if it was okay. And this guy that works there, he is awesome. And he, uh, he was helping me get all the boxes and the little carts. And he says, Chelsea, you know, I grew up and my grandma had the huge, you know, wooden thing out <laughs> and I would crawl underneath it and and he said, I, I started to help her and she taught me and I, I do know how to sew. And I almost got teary eyed. That is so cool. Just like even the fact that he would share that with me. Right. But I'm like, let's talk about it. Let's talk about quilting. <laughs> we don't need to not talk about it. I just always want people to know how cool quilting is, I guess. But yeah, I've never like, successfully taught someone how to sew. But one of my best friends also sews clothes really, yeah. really well. Kim does. Kim does. And yeah. she's made a couple quilts, hasn't yeah, she? Yeah, she's made some quilts and she'll call me and, and ask questions. And But what I love about Kim is, so one time I had like all these strike offs and I was like, I just got to donate these. And she wanted all the strike offs. She's the best example of someone like using everything that she can. Right. And uh, she made the prettiest quilt with these strike offs. Oh, we should get and a picture of it. I know. I'm that gonna, would be really cool. I'm going to message her. Yep, she was supposed and... to come over this week, but uh, yeah. No, I'm going to message yeah. her. Yeah. That she's would be fun. She's really talented. She's, yeah. 
There is a woman in our community that teaches a sewing class for yes, Michelle. younger girls, Michelle Askroth. Yeah, love and Michelle. a lot of them have started quilting and it's really cool to see. I'm friends with some of the moms of the daughters that are in her class. And I, I just think it's so inspirational. I'm really grateful that Michelle is doing that because actually my friend that does my hair, her daughter is one of the people yeah. in the class. And so sometimes when I have extra fabric, I will give it to her for her daughter to use. Yeah. And I always tell her, you know, if if Elsie doesn't like this, just have her give it to Michelle. To yeah. Sew. But Michelle's really cool because it's yeah. not just quilts. It's like bags and bags, stuff too. pillowcases, yes. little things to get younger girls interested in sewing. Which I wish I had learned more about yeah. earlier on. Yeah. I think that would have been helpful. Yeah. Uh, Michelle is awesome. She, yeah, does a great job. So- with say then you were somebody else who's listening wants to introduce a friend or family member into quilting or, or has someone that is interested what would be some advice that you could give to help them get started like is bringing some like hey come to a, this retreat with me is that like overkill is it too much would it be better to be like hey come over to my house let me show you how i how to do this type of block or uh, let me just show you the process of me putting a quilt together or how would you go about if let's say Cindy's like, Hey, you know what? I do want to start quilting. Where do I start? Yeah. I actually have a, oh, actually one of your friends, Sydney told me she would like to quilt. Stop she, it. She's going to have a baby in May, but she, she mentioned it one day. Stop it right now. Yeah. Sid said that. Yeah. Sid Sid and I went to school together and yeah. played sports so together. I, you know, but, <laughs> Billy's laughing at me. <laughs> but I feel like, no, when I teach, <laughs> I feel like we always meet women who their friend did introduce them to yeah. quilting and they did do it by inviting them to come take a class or go on a retreat or yeah. teach them something at their house. And then Wait, the person went on to... I'm like not being dramatic though. I am like shocked that Sid would want to sew. Yeah, because her mom doesn't no. sew. Yeah. And and this is what's funny about this girl. She She's the funniest person you'll ever meet. I would take Sydney to a retreat in a heartbeat just because she's so hilarious. <laughs> I think she has something started too, but she said I she just can't wow. work on it until after she has a baby. But Wow. Yeah. I'm going to text her. <laughs> What in the world? Say, hey. She'd be a hoot to have at your house, too. Yes. Holy cow. I, I actually want to comment on the retreat thing because I actually think that's the best place. I've gone to a couple of retreats with mom, and I was really, like, I'm really introverted, so I was really, really nervous. And it turns into this whole fun thing where all of a sudden you guys are like this community of friends and yeah. I love retreats the ones that I've been on I think they're awesome I think the quilters attic retreat that we went to in so Idaho over your birthday yeah I think that was really good because Chelsea it was one of those ones where you sleep at the place with all the so other nervous. and then you just sew all day and yeah. I think that was really really fun for you yeah and it was like a true retreat. Like I've been yeah. to classes that were like two-day classes with you or whatever. We did the one in Logan. Right. That was really cool. Right. I just have enjoyed the experience of talking to women about quilting and everything is just so, there's such a deep connection that goes with quilting. Quilting is very healing. Let me just tell you, yeah. a lot of women's experiences, it's a healing experience and you don't realize that it's just such an emotional thing. Yeah. Well, so to touch on the beginner in a retreat then, so maybe it would work in some cases where it's like, yeah, there's no other distractions. That's what you're there to do. Maybe you're not doing a class. You're just, you could go with the friend and the friend could work with you and help yeah. you. And that way you're both right there and have everything you need. Like, right. is that yeah. a way that it could be? And then there's other things to do outside of quilting, right? You know, definitely. Yeah, and a lot of retreats like that that are hosted by quilt shops, you know, you can you can walk across the street or walk next door and buy anything that you need. And yeah. I'm thinking of the big primitive gatherings retreat center. Oh yeah. I need I need Wisconsin, you know, and there are others like that too where yeah, you can you can just learn and you don't have to cook generally. All your food is provided yeah. for you or you go out to eat and 
I think that is a wonderful, wonderful way to learn to quilt. I will say this. We still really need to take a, qu- a retreat together. We do. Like in Vanessa. Vanessa wants to go with us. Let's, we need to plan it. We need a beach house one. <laughs> I'm calling Kate. We're going to Hawaii. That's what we're oh, doing. Oh, Kate, that's a big trip. Kate's in Maui. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's, we're going to go so in Maui. <laughs> You're going big. She's got, she's got, I'm, I bet you she, she's got the hookups. She's got the hookups. So she goes, she's right on the beach. Okay. So you can bring them to a retreat. You could do it in a private setting. Do you think in order for someone to want to continue though, like would they need a, I wrote here like an intrinsic love to, to create or for art because Isn't that also what might make someone want to continue doing it? Is it like, oh, I'm, I'm creating something. I make it my own unique way. You're following a pattern, but you can change colors or maybe you get to the point where you, you can change things up. You feel confident. If you're just doing something because, oh, I'm going to make this exactly how it is. Don't you think that would get a little redundant? Do you think someone needs to have that creative Some instinct to that. continue? I, I feel like people shouldn't be too hard on themselves. I feel like a lot of people think they don't have that, but mm-hmm. then they start quilting and they realize they really do love the yeah. creative process. But I also feel like some people just fall in love with things that they see and they want to make it just like that and they do that their whole life and that's wonderful too yeah. because they're still creating and they're mm-hmm. still making yeah there's still a process yeah. to there's still make, that whole process. making those blocks and everything yeah so uh, not everybody starts quilting and then wants to design their own but some some do and some don't and I, I was thinking also Val our friend Val that does quilting she teaches a lot of beginner and intermediate quilting classes at a local quilt shop and she has women who just sign up on their own, mm-hmm. but then they develop this relationship with her. And so they keep taking classes from her and learning yeah. as they go. And she picks the projects and they're happy to have her do that. For me, it is it is such a creative pull. Yeah. Like my experience, but I know. Because well, you every- used to like to draw and everything yeah. when you were a kid, right? Yeah. Everyone's experience is so different. So I feel like. Yeah, I can't, I can't like speak for somebody else, but even just little things sometimes when, cause I just got done with the hearts for my luminosity quilt and I'm like, ah, isn't it so wonderful? The accurate math it takes with cutting and like a quarter inch seam, it makes me so happy. Just those little things. I'm like, we made this. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I just, I guess everyone's experience is just different. But I, mine is rooted in a deep love for creativity. So I feel that, what you're saying. I feel like if you, yeah. And I, we've been designing, well, I've been, I don't. Are you designing new quilts? Yeah. Have you been playing with the new I've one? I've been playing with the new one. And I didn't realize how much I love doing that digitally and experimenting. And I haven't even started. So I'll, before FYI. you leave today, I'll show you a couple of things. Are you excited about them? Yeah. Are you? Did you redo it in Tulip and Vine? I haven't done that one yet. Guys, but. we got scans for a new collection <laughs> this fall. We shouldn't even be talking about this. Yeah. And But yeah, I keep procrastinating work that I should be doing. Because you want to create. Get, getting into EQ because I want to design the new stuff. This is what right. I'm talking about. It's like we're, I'm still making, I, I think that's why I haven't touched it is I am like really enjoying sewing with Laguna Sunrise right. and making, I have, yeah, I'm going to be done with them this week. So I'm really excited. Yeah. Man, that was off topic. Creativity. <laughs> that's the poll, you guys. It's but, creativity. Okay. Yeah. And that, and that sort of gets to my last point is like, what, what is it that keeps the joy alive for you? And I mean, may, perhaps it is just that creativity. Maybe it's, um, I don't, I, I don't know. I, what is it that y- y- we talked about where, where you started, what what got you into it and kept you doing it? Is that still what keeps you going today or has it evolved into the the whole designing fabric and, and creating new patterns? Is that, is that the thing that really sparks you and keeps you going now? Or if you were done creating patterns altogether, would you still love quilting just as much? 
I think there's always something more you can do. I think the yeah. ideas just keep coming. Yeah. And somebody actually said to me, are, are you going to run out of ideas for patterns? And I said, never. Yeah, never. There's always something that sparks or, or even looking back at something you that you did and think, I could rearrange that yeah. or I could do this a little bit different and make it possibilities are endless yeah i just really feel like there's but always... not just because you can it i re like you really love it yes and there will be even times where i'm like oh i need i should probably do a new fabric line but i and sometimes i'll get that fear in the back of my mind like well you have nothing left to give <laughs> but i do yes. and i think it really comes from because that's not forced when i start drawing I really love drawing. And then I'll have five pages of drawing and I don't even use all those drawings. And then I save those other florals or basics in a file. And then the next thing I know, I'm like, oh, I'll pull from all these to create another line. And right. it, it just keeps going. And I look at all, I could pick out our collections and say, oh, those are my drawings. Absolutely, 100%. Yeah. But I don't run out, I feel like. Yeah because I love it. Yeah. It makes me happy. And sometimes it's not going to make everyone happy. But yeah, even if there were no more patterns, I would still draw. Even if there were it was no more fabric, I would still make quilt patterns. I would still do it because I love it and that I want to keep doing it. And I hope if someone wants to do this, they keep doing it because they love it. Right. And I also feel like so many you're never too late to start. I no. I just see so many people, they retire from a professional career and, you know, maybe they have some hobbies, gardening or whatever, but they just think, I I, I want to do something with my time besides just sit around or, and so many women come into quilting later in life. Well, it's and, just And I mean, I phenomenal. don't know how the ages of everyone that has have sent in the, the quilts, obviously, but you know, you, you get some that are like, I just started quilts. Like the one we shared today, uh, she said she just started two years ago. Right. And she already yeah. made your block of the month quilt and it looked right. good. Um, we, we've had other emails in the past where like, Oh, I was quilting. I stopped, but I just retired and now I'm picking it back up again, you know? So but yeah, definitely never too late to start. And that's, it was, cool to hear that there's youth getting involved in yes. it but i mean you you could even be retired and and just start and and uh yeah so i guess then to wrap it all up because we talked about about a lot of different things today but i mean what would um ultimately what's the best thing you think you could do as a quilter to help spread the joy of quilting to others really just share with your friends what you're making and even if they, if you don't think that they're that creative type, share with them what you're doing and be, you know, give gifts of quilted items, yeah, I, I was guess. Say, yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. can, that can't hurt. Yeah. I also, I have another friend I should, probably should have mentioned her earlier, but I never introduced her to quilting. She saw the Missouri Star YouTube channel and started quilting. And I never would have thought that mm -hmm. she would have quilted my friend I Lisa. You yeah. told, you've said yeah. that before. Yeah. So you never know. So just share it with everybody because you never know who's going to think I, that I want to try that. Yeah. I think honestly, the best way I've been able to share is through my kids because my kids are like, quilting is cool. <laughs> they have grown up with it and seen it. And even my son, some of his friends will come over and they'll see the sewing room and they'll be like, whoa. <laughs> I think my mom likes to do that stuff. And I'm like, they're so funny. Yeah. Like, and my oldest daughter's friends too. They're like, Ashton says you have a YouTube channel. And I'm like, well, I, I do. And they're like, well, what's it about? Quilting? And I'm like, yeah, guys. Yeah. Like, it's my, yeah, my kids are awesome. They're like my biggest supporters. So yeah, Chelsea's oldest daughter, because we all run this YouTube channel together. She, you know, like middle schoolers, they want to every, every mid, and I used to teach oh. middle school, every most middle schoolers. I mean, their number one career choice is like, well, I want to be a YouTuber. YouTube I want to yes. be 
you know, I have a hundred million subscribers and then life's taken care of, you know, it's so she, she's, she's now at the age where she's pitching me ideas and wants me to oh, help yeah. her start her own channel. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, you know, well, we can, you know, focus on school. Yes. Stay. For real. <laughs> you, know, you like basketball, keep playing basketball. But yeah. Well, you know, if you come to me, with, I can help you, but don't, don't, don't. <laughs> Don't get carried away. <laughs> and, and she has a good eye. I am going to help her make a skirt this summer for herself. We did the skirts really? for her animal, her bears, yeah. dolls last at the end of last summer. And <laughs> I know she really wants to sew a skirt for herself. So it's not a quilt, but it's a step oh in that direction. Goodness. She she like tells me all the time, I am going to be, I'm going to play in the WNBA <laughs> And I'm going to go to fashion school. And I'm like, those are vastly different, but okay. Yeah. And I'm awesome. I, I'll clarify, I'm not, I wasn't ever discouraging her oh, from no, anything, I know you, you know, weren't. but like some of the, the thing, cause there's everything out there. Right. Yeah. So I'm like, I don't think you're, we're going to like film you painting your room bright pink or something. <laughs> right. You know, I, first of all, I don't think your parents will let you. And uh, second of all, I don't know. That's so, something she would do. Just something like stuff like that. So. Yeah. Cause I'm like, what do you want to do? And she's like, well, just like, and then she'll say like just random things. It's I'm like, yeah, just, all right, we'll, we'll talk. <laughs> oh my goodness. We'll have a business meeting. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, but this was a great topic and yeah. we really owe it to Billy for coming up with this outline yeah. for today's episode. And I thought the questions were really good. And, and so yeah. hopefully whoever listened, if you have someone you're thinking of sharing it with or, or run into some of the experiences that they've shared today. I mean, may, maybe this will help or you can share in the comment section about your own stories or, or advice to, to what you can do to help people who are interested in quilting. Right. Yeah. That would be a great comment thread to mm -hmm. see. Yeah. And For see, sure. maybe they were the person that was introduced. Yeah. That too. yeah. yeah. Uh, from yeah. either side, either somebody introduced you or you introduced yeah. a friend. That yeah. would be really Wonderful. Like yeah. That. Okay. So our next podcast episode will be airing on April, Monday, April 22nd. And we will, but that, and then after that, we will have the listener questions. Mm -hmm. So just another reminder to, if you have your questions, uh, quiltinglife at gmail.com. At gmail.com. The Quilting Life Podcast, sorry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. Quilting Life Podcast at gmail.com. <laughs> It's not we're going we're going back to the old the yeah, old Yeah, right. <laughs> Seriously. Thanks so much for stopping by. Bye.